So today we're going to be looking at the data plane operator and some of the differences that I'd like to highlight compared to Triple O. In particular, we're going to look at how to change various variables on the data plane nodes and how we can apply just those variables in like a targeted execution. With Triple O, for example, if you wanted to enable huge pages, you would edit the kernel logs in your heat templates and then you run over cloud deploy. And now depending on the size of your environment, it could take an hour, it could take multiple hours to roll that out to the targeted nodes. Even if you were just applying it to, to one role, you would often have to wait several hours for that to actually be applied. So I want to take a look today at how we can do that in the new version of OpenStack once it's deployed on OpenShift, and then how we can do a targeted deployment of just applying those things that, um, that we need applied without having to do the entire deployment over again. So I'm currently logged into my environment where I have deployed my um, MetalCube dev scripts cluster. So I have my, my OpenShift cluster deployed here and I have an EDPM node that um, is going to be my bare metal node for all intents and purposes. And we're going to look at how we can enable huge pages on that node. So there's a few things we, um, we need to do when we enable huge pages. We need to edit the the grub config, we need to regenerate that grub config, and then we need to reboot the node and make sure that it comes back up with huge pages enabled. So if I SSH in, for example, and we do cat proc command line, we can see that I don't have any of the arguments here to enable huge pages. So that's that will be how we measure the outcome of this operation is, is huge pages enabled in my cat proc command line. So to do that, in the EDPM Ansible project, we have a variable called kernel args. So EDPM kernel args. So if we want to enable huge pages, what we would do is we would provide a kernel arg similar to this one here. You can see this one here is enabling huge pages via our node set. And then we would have Ansible roll that change out. So let's take a look at what's required to do that. So I'm just going to copy a random one here. We'll go back here. We do OC get OSDP NS. So OpenStack data plane node set dash O YAML. Okay, so these are the Ansible variables that I currently have applied in this environment. So we can see I don't have EDPM huge um, kernel args specified here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do OC edit OSDP NS and we'll just go down to that Ansible section in the Ansible vars and we're just going to add that in, right? So we'll paste that in and remove this quote. Okay, so now we've provided the EDPM kernel args argument and we're going to save that. So at this point though, nothing is going to happen. So we, we've we already rolled this, this node set out. So now we need to apply those changes. So we do that via a OpenStack data plane deployment. So this is the first deployment I used to actually deploy this compute node and we can see that it's set up complete. Okay, so to roll out a change, we need to create a new deployment. There's one extra thing we need and that's the reboot service. So if we have a look in OC get OpenStack data plane services. So we don't have a reboot OS service. So all of these services are coming from EDPM Ansible and they're coming from the playbooks directory. So we go into playbooks. So these are all the services that uh, we can enable, right? So in, in our case, we want to uh, set up the reboot OS service. So we can see we have a reboot YAML here. So if we wanted to define that, we can run this command that I'll paste in. Okay, so we'll apply that. And now we have a look at our services, OpenStack data plane services. We can see that we have this new reboot OS service. So if we take a look at Bootstrap, for example, we 
we can see that it refers to the OSP EDPM bootstrap. And we can see that there is a bootstrap.yaml there, for example. So that's where this comes from. And you can define custom services the same way. It's just you need to get your playbooks into the um, OpenStack Ants for EE containers, which will be a separate video. But for now, just know that these are the defaults you can choose from. So we've defined that service. Now what we need to do is we need to create a new deployment. And now that this is where we're going to use a targeted deployment. We're not going to run the, uh, the entire deployment process again, which we can see is defined under the node set. Uh, spec services. So this is the jobs that will run on a default node set if you don't specify any overrides. Now we can override that from the deployment perspective. So because I've already done a deployment and all of these things have actually completed, um, I don't need to rerun all of them again. I just need to rerun the ones that are relevant to the huge pages change that I'm making. So I happen to know that the EDPM kernel module gets called within the bootstrap playbook. So if we look for EDPM kernel we can see that it gets called under the bootstrap playbook. So the only one I need to include is bootstrap. And then obviously I want the node to be rebooted. So we're going to also include that new reboot OS service that we created. So let's just create this new deployment. So we'll call it huge pages deployment. And we'll paste that in there. Just do some cleanup. So I'm taking these from a uh, QE job that I'm working on. So I just have to remove some of these variables that won't apply. So we're in the OpenStack namespace and our node set is called OpenStack EDPM. So here we're specifying the node set we want this to apply to. So we could have a hundred node sets all defining different types of nodes within our environment. I'm just choosing one of those node sets here called OpenStack EDPM. I want to pass it the force reboot true variable. So this is in addition to the variables that are defined on the node set itself. I don't want it to reboot every single time. So I'm just defining this on my deployment. It will always be separate. It won't apply to future deployments that I create. It's just this deployment. And the only services I want to execute here is bootstrap and then reboot OS. So I want it to update huge pages on the nodes in the OpenStack EDPM node set. And then I want it to reboot them. So we'll go ahead and we'll define that, that deployment now. Okay, so that's created. So we can see what we get here is OSDPD. So we have a new OpenStack data plane deployment and now it's deployment in progress. So if we go OC get jobs, we can see now there is some jobs for uh, bootstrap huge page update. So if we do OC logs dash F on jobs and we paste that in. So now we're following along with the logs of the bootstrap playbook as it's being executed. So this is where we're going to go through and we're going to update those kernel parameters in the Etsy default grub file. Then we're going to render a new grub.cfg and then this one will be finished. So you can see there it's checking kernel args entry is present, delete the older kernel args, ensure the new kernel args exist. So you can see there it's, it's applying the kernel args that we just specified. Um, it's adding them and we're going to generate that new grub config right here now. So we're generating the normal one for legacy boot and we're generating EFI. Then bootstrap is going to finish and it's going to hand over to our reboot job and the node will be rebooted. So we'll follow along with those logs in a second. Okay, so that one's finished. So let's check... So we do OC get PO label app app equals OpenStack Ansible EE. So we can see there that our huge page, well, let's just grep huge pages. So we can see there that it, it only executed the bootstrap EDPM huge pages job and the reboot OS job, and they're both completed now. And if we have a look at the deployment itself, uh, we can see that it is now in setup complete. So if we SSH into the node, so if we SSH into that node now and we have a look, we can see that it has indeed enabled huge pages. It's just 
appears to be not wrapping for me there. So we can see there that it's it's got all the arguments that we provided via the node set. So obviously that is a lot easier than what we had in triple O and it means we have a quicker time to iterate now as well because you know this has just been a couple of minutes. We've applied these via the node set. We've created a, a new service, a new deployment. It updated our command line, rebooted the node and we're up and running very, very quickly compared to what we would have been in, in previous versions of triple O. So the same can be said for any service at all. For example, if we wanted to uh, use a different version of the Nova Compute Container, for example. So if we have a look at what we're running here at the moment. So we can see there the container we're using for Nova Compute. So let's just go and get a different version of that container. So I'm not going to bother zooming in, but you know we're going to Quay, we're going to pull by image digest, and we're just going to copy the full name with the image digest there. So we'll close that. Now, what we need to do is know uh, what variable EDPM Ansible will use for the Nova Compute image. So if we go in here and we go Nova Compute image. We can see there we have a variable called EDPM underscore Nova underscore compute image. Okay, so let's go back and we're going to edit our node set again and down to Ansible vars. So this time we will provide in the EDPM Nova compute image and we'll pass it in that image we just copied. So now again, we just need to create a new deployment, but this time I don't need to do bootstrap and reboot. I just need to run the Nova tasks. So we go, so you get uh, open stack data plane service. We can see that we have a Nova service. So we'll copy our huge pages deployment to Nova deployment. And we'll edit Nova deployment. So we don't need the extra Ansible vars here now. And we don't need these two services. We just want to change this one to Nova. Now we already have a deployment called this. So we need to change the, the name. Nova hotfix. Now I'm saying hotfix, so you could build this container, push it to any registry. I'm just picking one that's already built for me on Quay for the in the interest of you know saving time. We go Nova deployment. And now we have a look at our deployments. We can see we have this hotfix one. Now if we look at the new jobs that are being created. We can see here we have a new Nova one and this one's appended with hotfix. So we do OC logs dash F on jobs slash. So we're just running the steps that are specific to Nova and that's all we need to do to roll out this hotfix. We don't need to run a full deployment where we're configuring networking and verifying that networking works and installing bootstrap packages and, and configuring OVN. We only need to be hotfixing Nova so we're only going to run tasks specific to Nova. And this is hugely advantageous for, um, you know, this is hugely advantageous for um, large deployments out there where you don't want to be touching things that you don't need to touch unnecessarily. We only want to focus on a very specific part of our environment and leave the rest of it untouched. And this is a, this is exactly what this kind of procedure was designed for, was allowing this kind of flexibility and the ability to be more intentional about the things that you're changing in your environment. There's less ambiguity when you run these new deployments. So we can see that now the container that's running on the node matches the container that we have specified in the node set. And we can see that the Nova compute container has only been up for about a minute. So again, very, very quick to quickly iterate on something to very intentionally touch one specific part of this deployment without touching everything else. And then once you've done that, there's no there's no reason to leave these deployments lying around. Um, well, once it says it's set up complete, we can just delete these at this point. There's nothing else you can do with these deployments.
So we can delete, for example, the huge pages update one, and it has no impact on the on the cluster at all. Everything remains unchanged. The state is still defined in the node set itself. The only difference being we passed in an Ansible variable to the huge pages job to make sure the nodes were rebooted. So if you want to see why it's not reporting complete yet, we can do dpd o yaml. And then under the status condition section, it will talk about what it's doing. So input ready is true, deployment ready is still false. So it's still saying that the Nova deployment isn't ready. Ah, there we go, it's finished now. So we can see it's now moved into setup complete. So quick summary of what we did in this video, we enabled huge pages on a node set. And after huge pages were enabled, we updated the Nova compute image and just the Nova compute image. And we showed how both of those operations can be done in a very targeted way to ensure you're only touching very specific parts of your environment without touching everything else which is advantageous compared to O, where you would change a variable in your heat templates and you would traditionally run an OpenStack over cloud deploy, which would touch the entire environment, run the full deployment from start to finish. Um, that's obviously a frustrating thing if you get you know, an hour and a half into your deployment and then something goes wrong and you have to start again. So it really decreases the time to iterate when you need to run those full deployments. We're, we're able to be very targeted about the things we change about our environment. So hopefully that will be a feature that is heavily utilized and it makes a difference into, and it makes a difference to your life in administrating OpenStack when it's deployed on top of OpenShift. If you have any questions, let me know below. Talk to you in the next video.